All right, second video of the year, a Human Origins in Africa, Chapter 1, Section 1B. Uh, keep in mind, as we go through these slides, it's a combination of information from the textbook, but also outside sources. So some of the stuff in these slides uh, may not be directly from the book, and it, it's stuff that I may have added um, after uh, creating the base through using the book. So anyways, um, we're going to look at the Paleolithic and the Neolithic Age first. So the Paleolithic, the Old Stone Age, is roughly 2.6 million years ago all the way up to just about 24,000 years ago. So this is considered classically as the Stone Ages. And the time after that is the Neolithic times. So we're going to compare and contrast these two time periods. So lifestyle. The big change in the Neolithic times is the agricultural revolution. Right? Whereas in the Paleolithic ages, people have to run around in the groups as hunters and gather gatherers, find what they're going to eat. Farmers emerged in the Neolithic age where people realize it's easier to just stay in one spot and grow your food than have to catch it everywhere you go. Another big change is governance. Now that people are living and settled in one territory, we begin to see the emergence of religious leaders, military leaders. We even begin to see sort of this first phase of slaves, where people are now beginning to live in different um, levels of society. Whereas in the Paleolithic times, the leaders are pretty much the older people, the people that survived. And uh, people tended to follow whoever was older, and that was it. In terms of the economy, the Paleolithic time with hunters and gatherers, they really didn't care about who owned what, where, what is. But now, where, what is, and who owns what is an incredibly, incredibly important term. Right? And this continues on for millions of years. Right? Even just until 100, 200 years ago, uh, being wealthy didn't mean you had tons of stock or you, know, you had um, access to certain patents. Right? It just simply meant you had land. If you had land, you were rich. Health-wise, people in the Paleolithic era were actually healthier and lived longer. And this is very interesting to a lot of people because you would expect the people in the agricultural revolution to have lived longer. But in fact, because of the agricultural revolution, um, people begin to get more tooth cavities. Their diets started to become very um, imbalanced. And uh, generally, people during the Neolithic era were actually shorter and lived shorter lives than in comparison to their Paleolithic counterparts. And finally, housing. During the Paleolithic time, people just would find caves and try to settle usually in the, inside the caves, if, if not skin tents and huts. Whereas in Neolithic age, we begin to see the emergence of sort of the earliest form of houses made out of these mud bricks. Now, an interesting fact I want to cover about the Paleolithic era is we see the earliest forms of human art during this time uh, painted inside these caves. And these paintings remain to be a huge mystery. Uh, there are various theories surrounding why people made these paintings. They range anything from that they were just maybe spiritual paintings for religious purposes. Uh, some believe that maybe it was for hunting information. That, you know, before hunters went out, they'd have to show the young hunters, hey, this is what, you know, a picture of a mammoth looks like. And this is what, you know, the type of animal we want to kill. And, um, yeah, there's altogether five theories. You can see them out there. Um, I'm not going to read each one to you. You can copy and paste that if you like. Now, the uh, Paleolithic and the Neolithic times have sparked a debate in recent days where whether or not this change of human beings settling was good or bad. And we'll delve into this issue a bit deeper as you read a, little, a few pages from Sapiens, a book by Yuval Noah Harari. It's an interesting concept to think about because you sort of consider this change as generally being progressive, but aforementioned, uh, it did come with its costs. Right? People grew weaker, uh, women were bearing more children, and... Um, you know, people began to have classes, right? There used to be a classless society. Now we have a society of classes, which uh, some would argue is not a good thing. Now moving on to our ancestors. Okay, one of the uh, earliest types of humans, um, our earliest ancestors were known as Australopithecines. Um, they existed about four to three million years ago, uh, very similar to what would be a modern-day chimpanzee. 
Um, they were about five foot tall for males, about three foot tall for females, so uh, shorter than the Homo sapiens today. Their brains much smaller, only about one third the size of Homo sapiens today. And um, what's interesting is we only discovered Australopithecines uh, about 50 years ago. So um, it's, it's actually a relatively recent discovery that we figured out mm -hmm. this group existed. Um, so yeah, try to say it five times. Australopithecines, Australopithecines, Australopithecines. Okay, I'm, I, I don't think I can do it. Maybe you can. Moving on to Homo habilis, otherwise known as the man of skill or the handyman. They're called the handyman because they were the first ones to begin using tools. Even though they were using tools, though, we're not talking about um, high-tech uh, instruments in any sense. Just very, very primitive tools like using stones to break open nuts and whatnot. Um, their brains were a little bit bigger than Australopithecines, and uh, they grew to be about 100 centimeters to 135 centimeters, so about 3 to 4 feet tall. Moving on to Homo erectus. So they existed about 2 million to 150,000 years ago. Uh, we discovered the earliest Homo erectus about 100, a little over 100 years ago in the late 1800s. Uh, they grew to be actually pretty similar to people today. They were about between 5 foot to about 6 foot 1. And they were also the first group to leave Africa. Right? They traveled around the world and uh, settled in various places. They were also the first to use fire. And part of the reason why they were able to travel so far is because they, unlike the Homo habilis or Australopithecines, they were erect as in they were the upright man. Their posture was more erect, which made, allowed them to uh, walk far distances. Now moving on to Neanderthals. So this is an interesting group because they're not part of the um, Homo uh, group, and uh, they may have coexisted with Homo sapiens. Um, scientists believe they existed as recently as 40,000 years ago, so very recent. And their brains were actually about the same size as Homo sapiens. And there's various theories to why the Neanderthals are gone, but Homo sapiens still exist. And uh, some of these theories include things like Homo sapiens may have violently wiped them out. Other theories include that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens just began to slowly integrate together and, you know, eventually there are more Homo sapiens, so the Neanderthals just sort of disappeared. Um, other even more sort of eccentric, interesting theories are ones like uh, that human beings became very close to wolves, and um, human beings were able to use wolves to hunt while the Neanderthals were not. So yeah, a very, very mysterious part of uh, history there. And another interesting point about Neanderthals is we, as human beings today, about 2 to 4% of our DNA are part Neanderthal. So every single one of us does have a little bit of Neanderthal in us. And finally, Cro-Magnon. So that's the earliest type of Homo sapien. They were about five foot tall, and um, they look very similar to human beings today. Uh, they spoke more than Neanderthals, which could be also another reason why Neanderthals died out before the sapiens, right? Sapiens, Homo sapiens were able to communicate, and they planned hunting, which made it easier for them to catch prey. So here is an overview of the uh, five aforementioned groups, Australopithecines, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Neanderthal, and Homo sapiens. So keep in mind that um, the Neanderthals may have coexisted with Homo sapiens, and they may have, have existed as um, recently as 30,000, 40,000 years ago. And you'll notice how the sizes of the brains gradually grow bigger, although Neanderthals and Homo sapiens may have had about equal in uh, brain size. Here's another sort of elaborate view, bird, si bird eyes uh, view of how we have evolved as a species. So we share the same ancestors as chimpanzees, uh, but we, we've gone different routes. And as you can see at the top right, you'll notice that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens sort of exist during the same time period. Uh, so that's it for uh, this video. Um, here are the copyright disclaimers. Uh, please have an excellent day. Thank you. Bye.